Hello, everyone. This is uh, Jacob Owen, uh, Systems Engineer for Aruba here in Indiana. Um, I wanted to take some time today to go through Aruba Central and some of the um, some of the tweaks and some of the areas that I've noticed on some recent deployments that um, you know might impact um, end user connectivity. Um, you know, and the other thing is I want to show off some of the tools that I've used to determine you know what these um, issues are with the environment. So. Um, the first thing I want to bring up is AI Insights. So AI Insights was a, uh, is a fairly new deployment, and essentially what that is is the APs are sending telemetry data um, from you know on premise up to the cloud. And once it gets to the cloud, um, Central begins to look through that data and it begins to look for you know common traits, common issues, um, and it presents them in a very easy to view um, format because um, you know in in a way that human beings can read and they can kind of understand. Um, it is where I have found a large number of problems that are easily fixed once we can identify that they are a problem. Um, so where we find AI Insights is two places. One is under All Devices Global Overview. This will show you the AI Insights for the entire, um, for all the groups and all the sites underneath, um, you know, that central account. Um, if you want to see specific insights what you have to do is you have to go under here you have to go into site and you actually have to create a new site um, for each of the locations so think of groups as where we push configurations from and sites are where we actually can do management and monitoring from so you know imagine you have a group for switches and a group for IAPs that's fine but you can put both of them into a single site so you can get switching and wireless uh, monitoring stats by looking at one place so it makes it, you know, kind of easy, um, you know, to do that. So what we do is we go in here and we create a site. Um, when you create a site, it's going to have, um, uh, you know, the site name, the street address, the city, and that way I can put it on the map. Um, and then once it's there, you just simply go up to the unassigned devices and you pull them over to the um, site that you want. Once they are in a site, you can now look at specific AI insights for just that site. Um, so it's, it, you don't see the, you know, it's more granular. Um, um, but essentially what we have here is we just have things like, you know, anything that the system sees that could be an alert or, uh, you know, an error or a warning or just a, like a debug. And the colors usually determine the, uh, the importance. So obviously red is bad. Um, so here it looks like I've got some access points that experience higher than normal utilization in the 2.4 band. Um, so the reason why is because I brought um, six more APs online that are not part of Central, um, and I crank up their 2.4 power just so that I would get um, this error thrown. So this is an error we see a lot in, um, you know, high density environments, and we may have to, you know, look at things like, you know, this actually gives you root causes. You know, why, um, you know, why is it happening? Maybe we got to change power. You know, the power is too high. Um, maybe. Beacons are transmitted at low data rates. We'll talk about how to reduce that here in a few minutes. Um, but essentially, it's giving you a list of the problems from an RF perspective, and it's giving you some ways to, to correct those. Um, where I see a lot of is this is whenever we um, deploy APs, um, and maybe the channel width is too large for the deployment type. So we would be deployed to APs at 80 megahertz by default, which is the default for Aruba and maybe 40 or even 20 is the preferred method. Um, usually within about you know, three hours of putting in a new environment, you can come in and check the insights and kind of see what's going on. Um, but a lot of these other ones are just, you know, whatever. Um, I do actually have some, I, they're actually pulled from live working systems, so I don't want to uh, uh, show the names of the customer. But I do have, some kind of examples of what um, you know. I have, I have one here that shows. Um, I don't know if you can really see this. Sorry, I'm trying to do presentation mode because it's too large for my screen. But here you can see that there's been excessive radio channel changes. So that's that's definitely an indication of interference. Um, which is usually an indication that channel width is too wide or, um, you know, power settings are too high. 
Um, and you can actually see under here the reason. So one of them is an empty channel. So one of the APs just saw there was an unused empty channel and it, and it chose to change. Um, in small quantities, that's not a problem. Um, but over here, the interference, that, that's a big problem. And the dark blue indicates that it's a 2.4 gig. Um, so in this environment, there's too many 2.4 radios um, in close proximity, they're powered on too high. So we may need to you know, trim data rates, um, reduce the power, um, or possibly even turn off radios. Um, but there's other things like, um, you know, there's just, there's more information that you can kind of make an idea about, um, you know, the health of the environment. But really it's all about, every time a channel changes, the clients that are affected, or the clients that are connected to that AP um, are impacted. So um, definitely cleaning up these, using the AI insights really starts to help, you know, clean it up. Maybe there's, um, you know, maybe high MAC authentication failures or high DHCP failures. Maybe this is going to be an indication that maybe my DHCP servers are starting to fail. Um, the other thing is Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, this definitely gives us the ability. Oops, my screen is so far off. Um, this gives us, you know, the, the Wi-Fi connectivity gives us the overall health of the devices connected to this site. Um, so, sorry, my dog. Um, in this case, 96% success, the association is 100%, authentication is 95%, DHCP is 95%, DNS is 93%. But we can drill into each of these and kind of look and see, you know, why is it failing? Um, is it because of a certain server? Is it because of... Um, you know, domain name does not exist, DNS requests fail to complete, et cetera. But this is all information. This used to be part of Clarity, but now it's been brought into, um, you know, AI Insights. So, and it gives us that, you know, view that we can kind of see the health of the environment. Um, but definitely use that AI Insights. It's a great place to, um, you know, find out, you know, maybe some things that are happening that you normally wouldn't see um, unless you look through logs or you waited for a customer to complain. Um, and now we're actually going to go into the config on how, you know, where some of these settings are. Um, so the first thing we do is we're going to access points. And one of the things that we oftentimes do is is we're going to go into the um, ARM radio profile or settings. Um, so under access points, we go into the advanced or the configuration and we go to radios. Um, we can go under access point control and actually um, customize, valid, customize valid channels. So back on AI Insights, if you saw a large number of channel changes that were caused by um, radar detected, then you must, your customer might be near an airport and you may need to disable DFS because by default, um, all channels are available on the five gigahertz band, um, well, within the, the US, constraints of the 5 gig band um, and 1, 6, and 11 are open on the 2.4 but the middle channels of the 5 gig are called DFS so that's dynamic frequency selection so what happens is the FCC has all made those available but if there's a radar event it forces the AP to change channels so if you see a large number of channel changes caused by radar your customers are being impacted every time it changes so just go ahead and disable those. And so they'll just take use of the um, access points that are around that. You can look at Wikipedia or any other, um, you know, for the list of DFS channels if you're not sure which ones they are. Um, but to customize those, we just go under here and, you know, we click edit. Um, the other thing that oftentimes is missed is these two bottom settings. So 80 megahertz support by default is um, enabled. So what that means is that um, we're doing 80 mil, mil, megahertz channel width on a five gig channel. What that does is it, it gives more bandwidth, but it eats up the usable channels because it bonds the channels together um, and gives, which means you might have more channel overlap. So if they, you know, if you bond the channels together, you go from having, you know, 13 usable channels to maybe only having four. And if in a high density environment, you might run into that. So, this is oftentimes always enabled by default. Um, what I'll always recommend is 
unless it's a you know carpeted space with you know maybe an access point every you know 40 feet um, or low density users, I just knock this down to about um, I disable this. What that does is that enables um, 20 megahertz and 40 megahertz. 40 megahertz we can also disable if we just want to go down to the straight 20 megahertz um, by going into the wide channel bands and changing this to none. So wide channel is 40 meg, 80 meg is obviously 80 meg. Um, so I've seen that a lot, especially in K through 12s, um, where there's a high density, you know, one per classroom, and we've actually had to go in and, and drop those down to 20 um, just to avoid the overlap. Um, so that's those settings. And then the other thing we can do is we can go in here and we can modify the, um, the radio power settings. Um, so these, I would recommend going out and looking at the um, Aruba Instant Validated Reference Design Guide. Um, I'll put the link to that in the, um, in the comments window below. But essentially what this is, is this tells you the recommended um, power settings for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, as well as a lot of other features um, or a lot of other um, options that we use. Um, when enabling the network based on what's going to be connected. So, I mean, if you're, if you're doing voice over IP, there's definitely different requirements than if you're doing just straight data. Um, but what I've done here, kind of like I said, just trying to, I'm trying to force um, some overlap and some interference is I've actually cranked the power up to 18 and 21. Um, so under here, I just, I customize the arm power range and then I set the minimum and transmit power or maximum transmit power. Um, it is very, normally we see min and max power on 2.4 at around six and nine. And then on five gig, we see min and max around um, 15 and 18. But like I said, that all depends on uh, the deployment type. If you have a, um, a coverage only model, you know, and an AP every, you know, 200 feet, you know, obviously these settings are gonna have to be adjusted. The other thing that we oftentimes see is if you have a high density 2.4 deployment, um, we sometimes will need to trim the data rates to keep the 2.4 beacons from traveling so far so they're not seen by the other APs. Um, the way we do that is that we go under the SSID. So this is a per SSID setting. So um, if you have some legacy devices that don't support, or they have to have the, the legacy data rates, you know, one, two, six, 11, um, you can do that on a per SSID basis, but we can come in here um, and we can change the, the 2.4 gig minimum to 12 and 54, and then I believe 5 gig is 18 to 54. Um, this just ensures that those beacons aren't being spent at the very low data rates, which they travel extremely far. Um, so in a high dense 2.4 environment, as well as 5 gig, but mostly 2.4, um, we can cut those data rates so that they don't transmit as far and so you don't have as much overlap. Um, but like I said, it's all dependent on if the end device needs that. If it needs it, don't turn it off or the device is going to stop working. Um, but those are two of the main components that I see in um, most of my deployments. Um, obviously, band steering, we want that to be enabled. So we want to try to prefer 5 gig over, um, you know, 2.4. Um, client match, once you have a, a well-built RF network, um, turning on client match allows devices to roam more seamlessly um, and not be sticky. One more setting. Um, a lot of times in certain environments like uh, warehouses where we're actually using directional outdoor antennas uh, pointing down to provide you know, coverage zones. We're actually taking an outdoor AP and we're deploying it indoors. So when we do that, it changes the characteristics of the RF. So what we need to do is we need to make sure anytime we're deploying an AP type outside of its normal, where it's normally deployed at, um, that we change the, uh, the installation type. So in this case, this is an outdoor AP. So by default, if I left it as default, it would automatically assume that it was being installed outdoors because that's the type of AP that it is and hard-coded into the um, hardware. Um, 
if I wanted to put this indoor, I could I'd, I'd change that to indoor, and it would have to require a reboot of the AP. Um, this is only needed, like I said, if you're using an AP in an area where it's not normally intended for. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it the way it is because I didn't really modify anything. And then one other thing is, and this is one that a lot of people miss. When you first bring up a, a group or a, a cluster, one of the things I always recommend is going in and coming down here to, oops, I forgot to do that. Enable URL user visibility. And then also under services, FRF, deep packet inspection. We always set to all. That gives us um, you know, the ability to start you know, pulling specific data about the type of um, traffic that's going through the AP. So these are just a couple things that you know, we can use to kind of get an idea of the health of the environment, maybe some things we can do to kind of get ahead of you know, customers having issues. Um, like I said, use the AI insights. It's a lot of valuable information there. Some of it is not really important, like um, you know, Mac 802.1x authentication failures. Not a big deal if you have a device that's not, you know, um, you know, configured correctly. Maybe it's failing, um, but it's worth it's worth watching this and you know being able to um, see what's going on. But I hope this was useful today. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.